Hey everybody, I'm Kim Holderness. And I'm Penn Holderness. And this is a special edition, you can see us if you're watching us on YouTube, of the Holderness Family Podcast. If you're listening where you normally hear your podcast. That's okay. That's okay too, but we are doing a special Amazing Race recap edition on our YouTube vlog channel so you can check out the video if that's something that interests you. Yeah, we are recording this on the morning of January the 6th. It is less than 10 hours after the completion of the premiere of the amazing race season 33 episode one and two we're going to recap it here what you saw what you didn't see and um a lot of emotion you guys yeah so i mean (laughs) let's just start with like what's going on right now uh we we want to get this out as quickly as we can um i just had a 10 minute allergic attack so if my voice sounds stuffy or my eyes look puffy that like uh, you may not know this i'm allergic to mornings usually we like (laughs) give it a second after that but uh but we got to get this out there as soon as possible that's that's not as important as the next bit, which was that my sweet, loving, amazing wife, who you're going to hear how great she is as this podcast goes on, couldn't get to sleep last night. I think I am an empath and I, we'd been kind of cringing, waiting for episode two to air because I, by the way, they, there were some mistakes we made that they didn't even show. Right. Um, so I made them too. And this was a very tough leg for us. And I was just bracing myself for that. And then, so after, you know, we were, we're going to go through everything. Mm-hmm. I just, I was still holding that anxiety and it was, the same, it was three in the morning last night and my heart was still wow. racing. That is not like you. Like you usually are asleep by 10 o'clock, honey. I know. I'm an early bedtime kind of girl. So let's get through it. Let's start. Opening scene, you see well, you know, there's a phone device that they hand us and Phil pops up. Uh, we didn't know where we were going and we hear Phil on our cell phone to tell us to go to London, England. Yeah. And, uh, and, and we get up and we go, they did an amazing job putting this together and editing it and getting it all through, but they show us, um, getting out of a car in Charlotte. It says Charlotte on the, um, it was actually Raleigh, but it makes sense because we did end up making our way to Charlotte. And I will just say that I think the hardest part of the race for me was saying goodbye to my kids. Yeah. And they show us kind of hugging in the front yard and getting in and knowing I wouldn't see or talk to my kids for what I thought for 30 days. We're going to get for that in a second. You could see, you know, I was trying so hard to be like, yay, we're going. And you could see the tears in my eyes. Yeah. Because I, I, this bucket list, this has been on our bucket list. I wanted to do it, but two things can be true. I wanted to do it and I had children I was leaving behind and all those voices and all those anxieties of like you're a middle-aged mom what do you think you're going to do these are like actual heroes and professional athletes like why would you think you could compete with them so I had that going like why are you doing this why are you doing this your kids need you they need you home not on a tv show and so that was going with I was like yeah I'm so excited and then there were tears in my eyes just a flood of emotions right yeah I mean in you said two things could be true. I think a hundred things were true on that day. There were so many things going on that we were that, that were going through our minds. You mentioned that part of it was you wondering whether or not you belong there, uh, and we both had that thought because by the time, I mean, this is something that. I think you figure out as the race goes on, but right around that time, we were starting to figure out some of the people who we were racing against. And we met Raquel and and Kayla right away in the Charlotte airport. Love. And I've listened to enough podcasts and read enough about the race that the people you meet on that first flight become your people. And they didn't show this, but we met Sam and Connie as well. Yeah. Sam and Connie are it's it. And just in, in case you guys, we obviously went through this, so we're going to try to explain this as well as we can. Sam and Connie, uh, Sam is the football coach who basically adopted um, a boy in his town who didn't really have a home and ended up uh, not only being his dad, but coaching him and getting him to go to West Point. And he's now, um, you know, like the starting tight end for Army football, which is amazing. So we're hearing this story um, that he tells us. We knew that Anthony and Spencer were on the race because um, during kind of the audition week, we recognized them. We knew the singing cops uh, were going to be there. These like beacons of hope for the city of Buffalo. We knew that Akbar and Sherry were going to be and there. We, that was the most amazing story, seen, in my opinion. So I we were we felt like some imposter syndrome. Like yeah. we felt like the the least impressive people on here. Everybody had been on Oprah or Ellen yeah. for being 
really amazing human beings. I mean, I, I just uh, Spencer and Anthony. They were actually, right. they, Clint, East, Clint Eastwood made a movie about them. Starring them. Starring them. Yeah, pretty cool. About, um, their, they stopped a terrorist attack. So we had some imposter syndrome right, right away. Uh, we And we met Raquel and Kayla. And I, you see in the episode, I'm like, tell me everything about yourself. <laughs> and they're like, we're just flight attendants. And no, they're not just flight attendants. They're amazing. That sort of puts you at ease, though. I, I remember like, I remember when you realized that, and look, I, Raquel, Raquel and Kayla may be watching this. It's we we love those guys. They're amazing. But just the fact that they were kind of I'm normal. like, were you on Ellen? <laughs> yeah. Were you on Oprah? <laughs> you okay? Okay. So we were, I so like okay. At least two teams haven't been on Oprah. Just love those girls and had a chance to connect with them and get to know them. And no alliances necessarily, but I right. felt this very maternal instinct of like if we had a chance to help them, I would. Yeah. I was just gonna say as I'm watching the show, a lot of it's syncing up with what I remembered. There's some things that happened uh, that they didn't show. There's also some things that I didn't remember that were on TV. Really, the most revelationary part was, even though we kind of got to know these people as the race was going on, we never really, they, they didn't really brag about themselves. So they had these vignettes at the beginning where they tell their stories. We just talked a little bit about Anthony and Spencer. I So Akbar and Sherry, I, I relate to Akbar because I'm six foot six, mm -hmm. but the first vignette comes up and the, there he is holding his hand with Oprah in the middle of his school um, because Oprah had come and been inspired by this program that Akbar did that basically he, he kept the school open during oh at-risk times in an inner city in Jersey. He also, one thing they don't really talk about in the uh, show, he put laundry machines in the schools to make sure that kids who felt ashamed to go to school because their clothes were dirty, had a place where they could do their laundry. It's just like really common sense stuff. And he is so cool. And I'm watching that. And Kim, Kim kept looking at me and saying, we make funny videos. I was like, we make, what are we doing? We make funny videos. And there's, I mean, there are enough people. I mean, it's the internet. So enough people are like, why are those stupid people on there? They're so cringy. I'm I like, don't I know. Them. I know. I know. We I don't, suck. We, I'm also What cringy. are we doing here? Okay. So that's, I wanted to just say all that to, to really like, kind of dive into the fact that you were feeling that that as you were getting yeah. in the cab and the race was we, starting like what are we doing here we yeah so um game on it was we land in london and it was go so you see this scene of us all running to catch to catch a cab what they don't show and i hope we don't get in trouble for saying this is everybody fell i did not oh, we did not start. yeah so we were running and I was like, slow and steady, Sherry and I in the back. Yeah, but and there was a dip. There was a dip and everybody fell and they didn't show, so they didn't show that. I was well, like, that yeah. was the funniest part. It was like, a, if you've ever watched the Tour de France and there's a Peloton and if the guy in the front falls, no one has time to correct because they're all drafting so close to each yeah. other. So one person fell, I think it was Caro. I think it was Caro. And by the way, Caro's so fast. So fast. Um, but you know, no one knew what this dip was. And so you see like from, we're from the back, you see from the back, it's, it's like, like a wave <laughs> of falling people. And thank God it was all the, the young people. <laughs> I know it's like the young fast people who were in front. So they got right back up. If I had fallen oh, like Caro fell, I would still over. be on that ground. Yes. Like they would still be putting me back together. So we had a, a, an amazing cab driver got us to Trafalgar square. And you guys, we see Raquel and Kayla get out. We were meant to look for a, a phone booth, a red phone booth. <laughs> it's like a dude in a phone and booth. And it's literally a costume. People in the amazing race loves a guy in a costume and looking for a clue. We see Raquel and Kayla head. We see them like scaling this wall. I had to go down a little bit because I didn't feel safe. It was like an eight foot drop. Right away, we jump a wall, like parkour. It was like parkour. I was like, holy crap, we are in the amazing race. Yeah. Like when Here, I- when Here's I, why Kim says this, because Kim is Susie's safety in, in most situations. Like we, and it's why we're all alive. Right? And I was like, oh my gosh, but we're on the amazing race now. I need to jump over this wall. So we scaled this wall. I was super impressed. And we got each each phone booth man only had two clues. And I was proud of you because Ray and Caro jumped up and you were like, no, back. We got it. We Which got it. Which is not like me. I know. I'm, I am the most Southern person. Like if you see me at a four-way stoplight. It's just like, no, you go. I'm just going to hang there until literally every, and it actually drives people nuts because I'm when I'm supposed to go, I don't. I know. It Kim 
if we're walking down the street and I could cut like through five feet of somebody's grass to yeah. save like 600 yards of walking, she still would make me walk 600 yards mm-hmm. to get around that grass. She is, she is the rule follower of all rule followers when it comes to traversing public and or private property. Yeah. So the fact that we jumped over the wall, uh, I didn't really think about that. That is not like you. And, um, I'm, I'm really, it, it was, it, you could write a book about it. <laughs> no, but it could I be was called proud the, of the wall we scale the wall by, we scale by Kim Holderness. It's a very short book. We're, it, so it's, we, we're done. The so book's we, over. We get the clue. We are supposed to head to Buckingham palace, the Canada gate. Yeah. And again, something we learned right away and flew out the window and have my notes. Here. Oh, here. Yeah. While, while you're looking at your notes, I'm going to also say when we knew we were going to be in England, right? The, you guys saw the cell phone was there. Mm-hmm. And so, but we didn't, we had to put our phones away as soon as they sent us that note. That wasn't our phone. Yeah. So basically Phil had the message that said, head to London, England. We had some time. Um, you are allowed to try to gather as much information as you can, when you can, as long as you don't have a phone, we were able to access the internet through, I think it was like an online cafe in an airport. And we tried to memorize downtown London because we thought something was going to be going on there. Totally useless. Did not help. But no. do you, you remember that, right? Yeah. We were like, okay, no, let's, exactly. yeah. And then we'd it. also been there a couple of a months ago and we tried to buy memory, like draw this little underground map on our book. It was, no, a it terrible was useless. Map. Yeah. So, uh, we get directions and we start running this leg had so much running. Yeah. And again, right. you guys sent us a lot of questions. One of them is, when did you pee? We didn't. No. Um, and we had just come off a long flight where I'm like, I need to be hydrated, guys. I really needed to pee. It was a lot of running. So from Trafalgar Square to the certain gate of uh, Buckingham Palace, we got we, we got there pretty directly. I think one of the lessons we learned on this leg is we stopped to ask for directions too many times. And every time you stop to ask for directions... Um, yeah. the, the photographers, they need to get a release just to be like, just in case they use them on film or on, on the TV show, they need to get a, you know, a, an appearance release so that it, it's a few minutes. And yeah. we did that too often, but it was fine. We Let's, got there. Here's why we did it too often. I'm going to do my impression of me and Kim Both trying to ask for directions. Kim is going to play the person who's giving the directions. Okay. Are you, you going to have a British accent? No. Oh God, no, that's offensive. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Sir, sir, sir. I'm sorry. God, that's so really funny. Do you know how to get to Buckingham Palace? Where's Buckingham Palace? It's right there. The, 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 Just no. take a left. The, the, and then right. Right. Okay. And then right. Okay. And then two blocks. Okay. And then you run about a mile. Okay. So we're see you later. Right, right, right. And then we like we just ran, and all we heard was take a left. And then there was a left, a right. They're trying to be as specific as possible and they're talking as slowly as they can and we only would listen to the first half of it. So then 200 more yards down the street, we're starting to second guess ourselves when we were supposed to turn and we were unsure and then we'd stop and ask somebody else. We didn't take our time to either write down. We didn't write down what they told us. Yeah. to start right so we get there we get the clue we're still we, we're feeling fine we're feeling fine but at that point we had run a lot yeah. and we had seen how fast Raquel and Kayla Spencer and Anthony Dusty and Ryan like they were faster than they us. were faster than us yeah. so we we had decided coming in we have a google doc maybe one day we'll share with you so if you've never watched the amazing race before there's a detour so that's something that as a team you do this is such so, a kim preparation so, type a thing by so the way, I'm they you. you know you will choose between one of two tasks okay as a team that you will complete we were like we are never going to do the judged task we're never going to do the task we are building something we are going to just depend on our own two feet because i trust us i trust our physical ability we've we're middle-aged but we have trained for this we are we are never going to put something together we're we're never going to do the judged things and the, a lot of that was based on the fact that we trained really hard and we thought we were going to be in the top percentile as far as speed and physical ability um, why did we think that? Why did we think we're that? 20 years older than a lot of the people on this race? Why did we think that we were going to be faster than army? Like than people who like no, stopped terrorists know. on a train and had box cutter scars in the back of their neck. I quickly saw that the digi Ben task was more running. And I was like, honey, I can't, we can't keep up with them. Which was against your initial. I, so right yeah. away we went against what we, our plan. 
And um, just to speed things along here, because this is two uh, this is two hours of amazing race. We chose this art task. Yeah, on the way to the art task, we got lost. Yeah. Again, the only reason we found it was because we ran into another team who let us basically follow them to the door. And, but just, that being said, everybody, they didn't show this part. Everybody got lost because yeah. the, at the street in London is like famously, those little side streets are famously confusing. Right. And the address wasn't right. So everybody got lost finding it. So I'm going to give ourselves a pass on that. Um, so we get into this art task and the clue said, you just have to um, assemble this piece of art correctly. Right. And it didn't say you were building a puzzle. It didn't say anything like that. So this artist, actor, person, um, uh, just says, here's what you do. You you slather like this wallpaper paste. He, he didn't say anything. He had, there were no words. He, he like, it, he pantomimed it. Right. And he then walked he put up. it up yep. and then he slapped it again. And again, the clue just said, you have to assemble it. You have to um, assemble it correctly or something like that. So it didn't say there was a puzzle. I will say within four seconds, we put up like half of a paper and I was like, this is too easy. Well, it, let, yeah, uh, I'm going to jump in here. It wasn't we, it was me. Okay, so uh, because Wait, you what? I was the one who started slapping it up there. Oh. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. I just thought maybe like if I get started, I'll figure it out. It's, it's sort of how I, I work with Legos. I just like pour them out and I start looking at pieces. Kim is someone who probably would look at the directions. So- I'm giving you some credit here because I started slapping it on there and they, I'm glad they showed this in the race. Kim looked at it and immediately was like, Ben, what are you doing? Um, I don't think we can just start slapping it up there. And so we together stopped and then you quickly figured out this. Uh, one thing I love that you figured out was you figured this out because you'd watched the amazing race so many times. Well, and that's, and this is going to lead to our, the next episode is we were, we are very, we were very, very, very prepared. We are longtime fans. We'd seen every episode, but in preparation for this, I rewatched and I made a Google doc of like why people lost on certain tasks. And I was like, so prepared. So I knew yeah. the amazing race doesn't just have you slap things on a wall. But it if was, it wasn't for you to stop me, there's a chance that I would have gone on for a little while and, <laughs> just and so throwing we, stuff on the and wall. You could see each other's stations from there. So I think the fact that we figured it out, the other people coming in could possibly see what we were doing, which is fine. We we got that, I have to say, very not quickly. It would took some it took some work, but it was a big huge pain in the butt. Um but we got it done pretty quickly. I yeah, was very impressed. It was a puzzle with pe with very flimsy pieces of paper that you had to put together and then very exactly put on a wall. And there was probably like a 10 minute to 15 minute delay moving them around a little bit uh, because they, they were tiny little micro spaces. Once you figured out that it was a puzzle, it was just a matter of, of putting it together and, and knowing that it was a bunch of union jacks together. And if you've never, if you didn't see the episode, it made this very um, avant-garde union Jack yeah. flag with like fireworks yeah. in the background. So, so the fact that you didn't have anything to, and you didn't have like a puzzle box to look at. Yeah. So it was, there was some difficulty. I feel like we got through that task. We saw all those other teams there. And by the way, there was only so many stations available. I think there was only six stations available. So we, again, that was something else. Like if there's only a certain number of stations available, we won't choose that task. We're such idiots. So we got out of there and I think they showed this out of sequence. You see me at some point, we like ask for directions and then I'm like, okay, give me a kiss. Cause I was like, I think we're safe. We had seen, we had seen Mike and Mo just slap things on and they didn't show this. I was trying to like get their attention. Like guys, you don't like, this is not, you're not doing it right. So I knew they, they were kind of in the weeds. They didn't turn their heads. I remember they, that. Yeah, I was trying. I was trying to be like, guys, no, like, yeah. it's it's a thing. So I felt like, you know what, babe? I asked for a kiss. I'm like, we're not going home today because there's it's going to take them forever to do that. I was fine with the kiss. I love the kiss. It's funny that Kim uh, has has talked about this several times. She's just stunned that she would have done that. It's just not really her thing that she does. But there was like a level of exhilaration. And also, we're, we didn't know what was happening on the other detour. There was a chance at that point because we were the first ones to leave. So that feeling like, oh, dang, we could be in 
first. That that happens anytime that there's another detour going on somewhere else. You could be in first. You always do this in your head, or at least I do. The, the best possible place we could be is first. The worst possible place we could be is fifth, right? right? So we do that math in our head, and that is a good feeling because on that first leg, winning it is great, but on that first leg, man, just don't, just don't lose. That is the losing the first leg. You talk to anybody who's run the race before, it is, um, you think about it, you do all this preparation and you're there for a day. Um, Can you imagine? So, I know it's it's, it, but somebody has to go home first. Of course, it's, no, someone always goes home first. So I think this is also we had some learnings, but and it was interesting watching. So we get out of that art task, and you had to go get like an, a nosh with the queen, um, and we asked somebody for the directions, and it was about a mile and a half, and the guy we got directions from said, you know, there are so many one way streets around here it is more direct to run. It's like one mile straight, take a right on this street, go for three blocks, take a left. The, he goes, if you could run it. Who is it who told us that? The guy in the street. You're right, when yeah. we asked for directions. Yeah. And, yeah. He and, said, don't get a cab, that's right. He's like, don't get a cab, there's too many one-way streets, it's too confusing. So that's why we came, we had ran a mile and a half-ish with our backpacks that were very full because it was winter. And that's why when we show up to greet the queen and Boris Johnson, we're a sweaty mess. By the way, on Facebook, you guys, there's people like, these idiots think they're actually meet, meeting the queen. No, no, you guys. The, the Amazing Race loves people Do you think I would have kissed at the queen. queen Elizabeth? Do you think they would let a sweaty mom in athleisure greet the queen? Yeah. Guys, we're just, we were Do like playing along. Do you think that Boris Johnson actually wears a bicycle like, helmet in a, in while a eating dinner? Come on. It's it's okay. We you know were what? playing along. Yeah. We were playing along. And so I was like, oh, Facebook. Oh, f- sweet Facebook. Well, it's Facebook. So I love Facebook. Yeah. So um, we get, so we had run there and part of me thinks like, oh, if we had taken a cab, maybe we could have been first. But so we get the clue and it's the first pit stop. And let me tell you, getting the clue that said head to your first pit stop. It means you're almost done. Confirming yeah. that on this first leg, we weren't going to go home. I remember that elation. Um, we got a cab pretty quickly. We get there and we knew, I knew we were in fourth because they had scoot Raquel and Kayla, Dusty and Ryan. Like they came in first, like Spencer and Anthony, Dusty and Ryan, Raquel and Kayla just bossed this, right? And they they were there. I saw them like scooting them out the door. As yeah. We oh, yeah. As we were going in, because then you had to yeah the the clear the mat out. They had kind of cleared it, out, so I knew I was like, oh, we're fourth, but whatever. Yeah. I, I, let, can we go back a little bit yeah. um, and just talk about watching the show last night? Because what happens is you don't really realize until you watch the show, or unless you talk to somebody who was on the race whether or not you picked the right detour. Oh, yeah. And I know that Kim mentioned that, like, these guys are really fast. There's no way we're going to catch them. If it's a foot race, like, we should have done this art thing. I remember that, that night, as soon as we found out we were fourth, and um, and then we watched it, and then we talked to them about it, the, that, the, the race has this way of editing time like an accordion. It can seem like it's really long when it's really short. It can seem like it's really short when it's incredibly long. That when we talked to Anthony and Spencer after the race, they said it took them about 10 minutes to get to all those places. It looked like a lot of different spots and they all kind of looked far away. Like their cab ride was two minutes when they were in the cab and every, everywhere they stopped, it was pretty easy to find the person that you were looking for. Like you go into the subway station and there's the DJ. So we did afterwards, I mean, cause Kim and I are always going to overthink. Yeah. And there's more about that real soon. Um, we, we, we stopped, and we talked about it and we're like, maybe we should have trusted our gut, trusted our gut and gone with the other one. I don't know. I think we may have finished the exact same place, yeah. but we wouldn't have had to put that puzzle together. I, um, I have to say, believe it or not, I mean, given what we did last night, we do take directions well. I, I did know what a Bobby was. It's a police officer. We would have been okay. We, I do know what Big Ben looks like. We would have been, um, we would have been fine with that. I was too intimidated and I doubted myself physically, yeah. but whatever. We were fourth. It didn't matter. We and could have also made a qu- uh, quote uh, from European vacation. Look, kids. We to Big Ben. Big Ben. Big Ben. Parliament. Parliament. Yeah. So there was a, a tremendous 
amount of relief. And then after each leg, we kind of looked at each other, like, what did we learn? And I think we learned that to trust the plan. Um, but that plan quickly went out the window yeah. because right away, episode two, I mean, we got about four, we have five, six hours. So by the time we ended to the time we started, we had like five, six hours of sleep. Um, and then we start the second leg. Yeah. Now the second leg, we're going to talk about it a little bit differently. We may gloss over some of it, <laughs> No. Uh, <laughs> but so the, if, all right, they were very complimentary of me. They were, I'm actually very grateful that they chose to keep in a part where I was explaining ADHD and how it can help you when you encounter a, a something right in front of you. That's a specific task. And I talked about hyperfocus. Hyperfocus is um, a phenomenon where you become fixated on something and it is part of ADHD. It's part of the autism spectrum disorder. It is usually seen as a negative when you say you've got hyperfocus. It's like when you're someone with ADHD, you're trying to talk to them and there's a squirrel outside, right? A squirrel right here. Squirrel. Um, but if you, if you direct it in the right place, you can be really good at something. And so it really helped me through that puzzle and the amazing race and their producers and editors kept that bit in. And I love that because I do want to be a champion for all the great things that ADHD can do. The second episode is an example of all the bad things that ADHD does. Okay. That's what I'm going to say. Like we'll, we'll talk through the race. They actually, there, there was a little less action in the race and we're going to explain to you why, but um, yeah. it starts with me falling on my butt. Um, yeah, so it, it was a very rainy day in London and actually Raquel fell as well, but their, their camera operator didn't catch, catch it. Can I just say, so it opens with me going like, oh, this is a, I should be in carpool right now. This is a race for the young. And then like splat pen goes down. It was a rainy day in London and we were running Yeah, and it hurt. Oh but my God. I, I heard. The I streets just, of London are firm. I think actually several people fell that day. Um, Dave, our amazing photographer, the crew, uh, we'll go on and on about them. They were amazing. Yes. He was like, <laughs> he <just can't laughs> any news. Okay. He's like, oh, I've never caught a fall before. I never caught a fall. <laughs> and we got into the cab and he's like, look, there's look a little monitor. Yeah. There's a little monitor on oh, the man, side we of the camera. We were camera. laughing so hard. Um, and, but it was tough. I have to say, we got to a cab that they didn't show this part. It was hard to find a cab. We saw everybody because we, we started right behind them. We saw them all exit the starting point, the pit start to the left. I was like, uh -uh, we're going this way. And we took, if, if we had kind of, we got a cab. We were one of the first people to get a cab because we went to the actual street they they went somewhere else i don't know where they got but we got into a cab we got caught in the worst traffic we got out they didn't show this we got out and started running our cab driver was amazing he guys you got, he goes you guys this traffic is terrible it's about a mile away you, you know you we he got us run. yeah he got us within a mile he goes just run so we started running it was what was it 30 minutes in the cab before that started it was a long way it away was, and it was, it was bad traffic it was 30 minutes yeah. of bad traffic he goes just run he the traffic led up he got past the accident he found us, caught up with us, picked us back up, picked us back up, yep. and because he felt bad, he felt bad. For he's like, I, he's to like, I told you to get out, so he found <laughs> us and drove us there, yeah, and didn't charge us the, that for that extra oh fare. I totally forgot about that. I know, I, and, but, but he's such a good human. So people who are listening are probably like, why didn't they share that in the in too the many? Show? There's ten. Teams. There's there's, a, there's ten people at this point who are on the race, and there's no way that anybody who's a contestant is going to get all of their moments. Right. I'm sure everyone who's watching is like, what about A, B, C, D, E, and F? It's, it's a 40 minute show and they have to cram it into like a tiny amount of time. So, okay. So we get to this mail station and it's the first roadblock. We had decided our plan was that Penn would do the first roadblock because I'm an anxious mess. And again, he had, a roadblock for people who don't know uh, is something where just one person of the team does the task. And there's a, there's one line. It's like, who wants to, who wants to sort for whatever? Who wants to get the mail? Who wants to get the that's, mail? That's who what still it was. gets mail? Yeah. And so you have to, based on that one line, decide who's going to do it. We were for the most part, just going to alternate back and forth. Um, unless it was something that was exceptionally obvious that like, Oh, extreme height would be a benefit here. Um, so he was going to do it first. Uh, roadblocks 
on The Amazing Race are pretty challenging, right? And we we had watched every episode. We're ready to like put puzzles together. We're ready for this. And Penn jumps in this little rail car. It was little. It, it, you looked like a clown. Yeah. So as they showed me getting out of the cart and um, it was about a half of a second shot and everyone in our house, my children, my wife, and then we were on a Zoom call with some friends. Just everyone immediately started laughing. So and I'm like, why are you guys laughing? It, because I looked like a um, like a bear on a tricycle in the yeah. circus. It was this time that, yeah, it, I, I guess when they used to use this thing, people were smaller. People were, humans were smaller. Yeah. I will say in the clue, so he opened up the roadblock clue and there was a name you were supposed to, like you thought you were looking for. There was, yeah. a, there was a name and a zip code on the clue itself. And I wish I'd written it down. So it wasn't like, get in the train and find a clue yeah. it was you, there was a, there was a name and yeah. i should have asked the crew what what that was if yeah. somebody had it in their notes but so pen went in thinking he had to find a specific envelope so that's why yeah, he goes let, in let me just say what i remember from the beginning i remember getting in that cart it, they didn't show how slow it was, okay? Like, they, they obviously did a speed up on the edit to show that it, that cart looked like it was running at about six or seven miles an hour. It, ran, it was less than one mile an hour. It was the slowest cart I've ever been in. And it went into a very um, small hole. Like, that's the reason why it exists. It, it's like a, th there was nothing on any side of you when you went through whatever the granite was in the mountain to get to the mail. And, uh, and it, it, I was... Um, I, I got claustrophobic. They didn't show any of this. I was like, really, it, it, it was a, it started with some tension, um, got out. And, uh, like I said, time is an, an accordion on the amazing race. And it may have looked like we were there for five, 10, 15 minutes before we found the clue. We were there for 45 seconds when I found that first clue. Um, that is why when you look at the, the video, there's a, a shot of me as soon as I find the clue and Lola is so funny. Lola's like, I make that face all the time. Like, wait, am I getting punked here? I just found a clue. It was slightly discolored. It, so it wasn't the It was not the yellow. It so, wasn't that. It was a black and white version of so this. So you've watched The Amazing Race. You've seen this clue, right? Yeah. That we, that right. we got off Amazon. We didn't take it at all. Um, but here's what's going through my head. I found the clue. I'm like, Oh, we've been watching this show forever. There's no way it's this easy. If if I do it, I've got to get on this really slow cart and go all the way back. And if I got it wrong, it's a round trip and I have to go back. By the way, Ryan and Dusty, I heart those guys, love those guys. Ryan's clue was open. So he, I noticed it last time in the episode, Ryan, you are not supposed to open a clue unless you're with your partner. He opened it to confirm it was the clue. So he got in and out. If you could have opened it and seen that it was a clue. I'd have been fine. You would have been fine. But you're not, you're supposed you're to open the clue to. with your partner. You, yeah. You have to both be together when you open a clue. In his hand, well, the clue was I, open. I, I'm not, I don't want to make any excuses here I, because I was holding a clue in my hand. And the reason that I knew it was a clue was because it was a freaking clue. It's looked, it was a clue. It's always been a clue. We've watched 32 freaking seasons of this that each have 11 episodes. That's hundreds of maybe thousands of hours. And every time there's been a clue that was a clue, it was a clue. So like I, I, I should have gotten on the cart. I was sitting there with Ray. So Ray and I had become buddies by then. <laughs> Ray is the super hot dude. Who, he was on Love who, Island. Who was on Love Island. Who It's so funny. Like when we were trying to figure out who everybody was, we're like, okay, Akbar's with Oprah, the flight attendants, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're who they are. But Sam, you know, he's saved a guy, you know, saved a homeless kid. Spencer and Anthony foiled a terrorist plot. I'm like, Ray and Caro are so hot. They don't need to have done anything. They don't need to have done anything. I know. And by the way, they, everybody <laughs> on this season was so attractive. Yeah. I was like, what are we doing here? They, yeah, there's, um, yeah. They were smoking, smoke shows. Smoke um, shows, the two of them. That reminds me of something I want to talk about. What? And can I, am I allowed to go back? Bloop, 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 bloop. Yeah. Um, my favorite part of the first episode. Yeah. Can we back up to that? Yeah. Um, we got to the mat. We finished fourth. I don't remember him saying it, but as we're walking off the mat, Phil, the first oh, thing Phil, yes. the first thing Phil says to us, and I love Phil. I love Phil. I will be talking all season about what a hard worker he is. He's not what we call a dentist host. That's what I call the host who shows up at the very, very, very end of the You know, the dentist just shows up at the end of the Shows cleaning. up and he wraps your tongue in a towel and goes, okay, that'll be 15, 
billion dollars and then walks away and he's like, I got a tea time, stick something down her throat. Um, he, oh, that one. <laughs> sorry, he's, he's not content. a dentist host. He he's is hardworking. He's a hardworking. He edits the first like fine cut of everything. He's a big part of the production. He's always around. I don't know when he sleeps. I love Phil. He is not a dentist host, but as we're walking off the mat, they showed this in the show and I would have forgotten unless he, unless we showed it. He goes, okay guys, well, good luck. Hey, you know what? Make me proud. It's always young people who win this thing. Well, he said, he said, or, like, what? he's like kick ass out there because you can't let the young people have all the fun. Right. And I was like, that, oh. uh, <laughs> what? I mean, we knew that we knew we were the old ones, we knew we we're the old ones, but they don't have to tell us. They don't have to remind us. And so I, my phone melted with like all of my friends. Like, did that guy just call you old? And the answer is yes. yes he called us old. So it's sorry. fine. It's yeah. fine. Anyway. That was an important part of the first episode I know, that we I needed believe, to talk about. I can't believe we missed that. I'm sorry. No, thank you for So. Well, all right. So let's get back in the, in the, uh, in, in me and Ray and Ray and I were buddies. Cause another thing they didn't show in the first episode was, um, we, we found that art place together. As we were walking out, we had a quick chat about how to make like to confirm that they were doing the right thing and to make sure they were getting the puzzle right. So we had built a rapport with Ray and Caro. So when I was there with Ray, we were comfortable talking to each other. Ray pointed out that Anthony not only had the clue, but had a box in his hand that was in those like, so he brought back something just in case. I think he brought it back just in case he needed it. I don't think he brought it back to mess with us, but he was definitely holding a box. Ray pointed it out and we're both like, oh, so yeah. you need the clue and, and the address. Something else. So we proceeded to rifle through and I was like doing zip code equations in my head like an idiot for 30 minutes until the, the next group showed up, got the clue. And then I remember Sherry looking at me like, what are you doing? It's the clue, Pen. You know, know how that it's a clue because it's a clue. Okay, I know. And so I, they showed the interaction between um, Ray and Caro in the cab afterwards, and they were it was tense, yeah. right? Uh, there is a YouTube extra. I want to brag about this. We're going to take some time on this. I, I know you're looking at the clock. I don't care. We're going to take. We're going to let this breathe. We're going to take some time on this because I was so pissed off that I had just cost us whatever lead we were going to have. Um, and Kim was so cool. Now the broadcast version shows me saying, Oh my gosh, I messed this up. And Kim going, no, it's okay. Um, then they show Ray and Carol in the cab and they're really getting after each other. Um, which I understand that is something that happens when you're under that much stress. Part of our preparation was how we were going to talk to each other when we were struggling. Yeah. And when one of us had done something, you know, had made a mistake or overlooked something and, we were just going to be kind and give each other grace because it's a race and tensions are high and we enter just believing that we were doing the very best we could. So I think we were very prepared for that moment, which was, and he was very upset with himself and I was like, dude, we're fine. Yeah. And on the actual broadcast, it shows, hey, I'm really sorry. And you say, dude, we're fine. If you guys have a chance, I don't think we can put it on here. But if you have a chance, and if you're watching this on YouTube, go go to the Amazing Races channel. There's a two-minute clip called A Good Wife. It is the proper name of this clip. And it's it, you see me just from the minute I leave the train station to being in the cab to just lamenting and feeling so bad. Because it's the worst. It is the worst feeling in the world when you let somebody down. Um, and when it happens with a bunch of cameras, cause there were so many cameras filming me y'all, when you start to mess up all the oh, other cameras, yeah. they, they, like flies, they just start gravitating toward you. And on your side, they were doing it too, oh right? So on both sides, they're like, why is everyone filming I know. us? And so there, there was like four <laughs> cameras in my face, like waiting and they didn't show yeah. me that, but it was like, what do you think is going on in there? I'm like, well, right. there was a very tiny hole in a very large husband. I was just <laughs> really worried. I will say it ended that clip ended with me saying, you know, and this is true. One of my biggest fears walking into this race was that I would let my husband down and let our team down and we go home because I did something. So not, not that you let me down. That wasn't it, but it kind of took the pressure off that. That's very sweet. So, of you and, to and, say. And so in a way, <laughs> you're him, welcome. Him doing that <laughs> helped me. That's, I mean, by him doing that, it helped me, man. I, I just, I felt so bad and I am so glad. I'm just really glad that they, 
they put that extra clip on YouTube because it's, to me, that was one of the most important parts of the entire adventure that we had because that was the opportunity for you to say, I told you so. And I would have like, I probably would have, if you had done that, I would have tried to defend myself. I would have felt cornered. It would have led to a fight. Um, and instead you just, ha you showed a lot of grace, um, you know, and I think honestly, we can get through the rest of this episode pretty quickly because the most important thing that happened was you forgiving me for acting like a flipping idiot uh, but when I had a clue in my hand. So anybody who's watched The Amazing Race before and we've studied the show, tell me a simpler roadblock. So roadblocks There's are never been. I, t an tell me, one. tell me like I'm, I was racking my brain of like, when has there been something where you just like reach your hand and not even yep. hidden and pull it out. So I think that's why this, this race is so mental because you're like, it can't be that easy. Yeah. Um, so moving on and we are going to move on. We, and we can get through the rest of this pretty quickly. Well, I will say there's some stuff behind the scenes. So we get to the square, we get our clue and this is a detour and it was darts or decorate. We initially chose oh, yeah. darts. <laughs> we picked darts. We picked darts. And then the cab driver the cab, started talking to us and the cab driver yeah. talked us out of it. He's like, you could hit a bullseye like because you each had to hit a bullseye like and I, and I was like well I've never actually hit a bullseye before and he was like so you think that now with the camera in your face you are going to hit a bullseye I'm like all good points good point sir now the sir uh I I do think that it's possible that he may be on a dart team because he was like do you need the middle ring or the oh, yeah, outer and, ring and i was like it, oh yeah, god i don't like, know he, yeah he definitely ha and and then we realized oh wait everyone in uh england is a baller dart thrower right. they are like that's that's their version of so i will i will say um we so we switched mid midway yeah so we were already on the way to the darts we're almost there and we switched had him take us to the decorate so we didn't read the there's you get a clue we didn't read it very carefully so you get a clue yeah and then which i got on amazon i didn't take this at all and yeah. then there's so there's the initial like head to this place and then there's the more information like if you choose the decorate we didn't read that part again our the number one thing we wrote on our notebooks was read the clue read yeah. the clue read the clue yeah and it said you had to create a flag of the european union we didn't read that part y'all we just thought you had to make a flag. We had studied flags. I we had a flat for six months. We had flashcards when we were flying out. We before they you know before they checked us in. I had flashcards. I could name. We knew every, all the countries. We knew all the countries. It looks weird when they're made of blueberries and strawberries. Like they look weird, but we didn't read that they had to be in the European Union. Yeah, we just tried to find the two easiest cakes. And and so Ray and Caro actually said like you're doing it wrong. And so, oh, yeah. so they didn't show that, but then also to kind of repay that Sherry and Akbar were doing the wrong cakes and we told them. So they, they did, didn't show a lot of the helping. out. They didn't show a lot of the helping. I have to say, we did see Raquel and Kayla making the, um, the great Britain crake. And I, um, remember how I just said I was going to help them because I do, th I want, like, I wanted to win, right? I want to win, but they were ahead, but, but, um, they were ahead. And I was like, great Britain is, you know, cause after we figured out, like it had to be in your, like in the European union. Right. I was like, mm, I, yeah. Brexit y'all. So. Isn't it weird how, and I, I, I guarantee you everyone else is this way. If you're ahead of somebody, you want to help them. If you're behind, you don't, you're very much less likely to if, help them. If we were ever ahead, we would take the opportunity to help. Yeah. Anyway, so that's why we look like such idiots. And let me say. Oh, here we go. Let me say. You, is this is drippage? The drippage. Yeah. Hashtag She's drippage. She's mad about drippage. So Ray and Caro, drip, although drip. They, did, they did help us. They yeah. did help us, so I'm going to forgive them. Not for them. It's not their fault. But this is why we didn't want to ever do a judged task. So our blueberries were dripping. And he made us go back and redo it. Ray and Caro had drippage. And they didn't have to go back. They helped us. It's fine. They're gorgeous people. Gorgeous people, you know, get away with things. I'm kidding. That it's fine. And watching the dart thing, if I had realized how close you could be, we should have done darts. That's another example. Okay. So we had, 
we were eager to watch this part of the show because people explained it to you, but you, you have to see a challenge to really understand how easy or how difficult it was. I would have was. sucked at it, I'm sure. Dude, they, but here's I could how, have sucked at it for 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah, and we still would have been faster yeah. than doing the cake. Also, they were standing four feet from the dartboard. And I, the standard length is probably twice that length. Don't you, you throw feel darts. like they should have had to answer or do some sort of like flag trivia? Like if they had to... Which also we would have been fine with if they had to like pick flags of the European like or hit a f- uh, your like hit a flag or aim for a flag in the European Union or something like that you know yeah. make it more apropos but it was like it, they look, were three feet away just a, I mean quick news flash it's not like when the race uh, there there are these people who strategically build the race and they practice it and the producers go out and they do their they do a run through of it the day before. It's not like they necessarily want both of them to be equally hard. That's not always the case. Sometimes they make one that's easier, but it sounds harder on the detour. You know what I mean? On the list. So they want to trick you one way or the other. I think this one, they knew that the, the dart one was going to be pretty doable. It's it's on us to pick the right one. Yeah. We just didn't. Th- no. This is the second straight day that we picked the harder one. And it was one that was judgment based for the second straight day. We told ourselves we were not going to do gonna judgment do- based activities because it puts it in the hands of somebody else. And then we did the first two were judgment activities. We're so, idiots. Yeah. Uh, so by the way, let me be clear. The people who did the darts did it well. It would have taken me long. I would have been the last one out of there. I've never once in my life hit a bull's I, I don't think it was, I'm not saying it's simple to hit a bullseye and if sitting on my couch, it looks so simple, but I know it's not. So you guys did great. Um, but that, so, but they also, and I don't know, I mean, is CBS going to cancel us here? It's on the internet. So I feel like I can say this. They cut out a task. So I think they cut it out because the, the order didn't really change too much. Um, we had to climb the orbit tower Mm -hmm. but the weather was so bad we were supposed to like slide down it but the weather was so bad we had to like just run up and run down to get a clue right so if you look up the orbit tower it is a tourist attraction in london it is the world's tallest biggest longest or something est slide it's not an it's not a water slide it's not an ice slide it's just a metal slide and you get in like a sack and you go down pretty fast and you go inside and outside and there's actually like a youtube video where you can see what it looks like it's a lot of fun Again, it was so foggy and wet. For our own safety, I think they decided that you just had to go up, get a clue, and go back down, which doesn't sound exciting, but a lot of stuff happened uh, well, getting there and getting back. Yeah, so we let our, another thing, we let our cab go when we got there. Yeah. So we ran up and down. We ran so much. We Very quickly. Um, but the reason, so Spencer and Anthony left in front of us, but we finished ahead of them um, by a couple places because... We we were all like Spencer and Anthony. This, they didn't show any of this. Like they were trying to Sherry and Akbar were were smart and they held their cab. So Spencer and Anthony were trying to pay off the cab driver. Like kick their stuff out. Let me take this cab. Let me take this cab. Um, and we we were laughing about it. Yeah. Um. Because but we found a cab faster than or we we got into a cab faster at the same time. So it wasn't like a cab race. Like we just got into we hailed one faster. We hailed one faster. So we were able to finish right. ahead of them. So that's like the lead change happened there. It wasn't just like we left the cake thing and got a faster cab. Like we, right. but, there was a challenge in there. But in the end, we were able to make a cake. We were able to get up and down a tower. We were able to get to the double decker bus. And then we quickly found out that this was not really even a pit stop, that the race was going to continue. So that's that's how that's how the second episode ended. No one was eliminated, um, and I j- here's the part where I really want to go behind the scenes a little bit, mm-hmm. and I and I hope that C- I, CBS should be okay with this, um, because they pre- they previewed what was going on next. The next day, which will be next week, is when the world turned completely upside down. Um, but as you know, they it doesn't just happen like this. CBS was already trying to figure out what they were going to do and how they were going to get through this race, which has, when you count them all together, about 3,000 employees, Mm -hmm. whether they're in LA or around the world acting as extras. Um, And they had to decide whether or not they're going to shut down production. As that was happening, the guy who runs the show, his name's Bertram, who's awesome. He's like everywhere. He's the most active executive producer I've ever seen, had already taken the advanced crew to the Arctic Circle 
where they had planned, and this is their, their articles about this. They had planned like two or three legs in a row that were all going to be under the cover of night where there was no sunrise, which would have driven my wife Batty. insane. But, and so they were having to make all of these decisions while still running the race where they were right now. They had found out a couple of weeks earlier that they weren't at all going to go to Asia. Which so, was upsetting because in our, pa- they give you, they take your passports from you and then yeah. they give them back at the start of the race. And there was a visa stamp for Nepal. So I'm like, oh. baby, we're going to Nepal. Yeah. We're going. And like, by the way, no way we should have gone to Asia. No, so at, that point, at, at so. that point, so I had asked the question before the race start, like coronavirus is right now in China. How concerned are you? And there, and they, said, I will tell you this, we're not going to go to Asia, right. which was disappointing because I, that's like, I wanted to go to Asia. I know it's famously hard on the amazing race, but like we signed up because we wanted to see it. Um, and everybody was like, Oh, I had no idea. I had no idea. We watched the news. We were taking off on this race thinking this is probably a bad idea. <laughs> so we were talking to producers like, are you sure? We and they, be and doing they couldn't this? say anything. And they, so it's understandable. Um, they couldn't say anything. The next, the next leg, you'll see a full leg and then, you know, it is what it is. But right there, like w- when we were in London and when that episode ended, I just, I want to be a fly on the wall of the producers and the people who are running in the show. Cause they're having to tell this story of us running and making cakes and going up and down towers. They're, I think on the fly, having to create whole new adventures that weren't in Asia as this was going on. What do you think their text messages were saying like that day? That the (laughs) old people, Kim and Penn, are worried about this thing called the coronavirus because (laughs) I would ask anybody. I was like, are you sure we should be doing this? Um, We got a lot of questions last night on Twitter and on Instagram. And first of all, thank you for everybody who watched and supported us. And there was a lot of messages like, it's really hard to support you right now. Um, And for the record, we came in fourth in the first leg. And after all that, after a really rough second day, we came in fifth. Top half. So how is that? I mean, we had, so I think that after a really hard, not great decision-making on anybody's part day, we came in fifth. So we felt good oh i didn't feel good no but i i think but good lucky to be alive i think that yeah. we i remember getting onto the you're gonna see it was three legs in two and a half days so it was a very tiresome grueling uh first three legs we kind of we get into the next we had a we had a little bit of a sleep and it, they'll reveal where we were um i remember looking at Penn saying we did the absolute best we could and we are just chop half. I'm like, how, this is going to be hard. This is going to be way harder than I thought. Do you remember the, what I did that night? Um, you wrote in your notebook. Yeah, I did. And this is not like me, y'all. I'm not a daily affirmations guy. I'm not Stuart Smalley. I don't look in the mirror and say I'm good enough. I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. I am a let's just let's just go. Uh, but after that day and after that moment inside the mail center, I wrote down three things in the book and it said don't overthink it trust your gut start having fun right because i didn't have much fun that second day and i like to have fun i'm usually a fun guy but i was not i was having fun when the race was over and i knew we were winning but i i was not enjoying myself after by winning he means just not being eliminated uh, right. That's what I mean. Yeah. We yeah. like to me, those first two legs, it's, it was about not being eliminated. So, but I wrote that in my book and I looked at it before every single leg. Um, and I, I think overthinking is a real problem in both of our lives at some point or another mm-hmm. with, with what we struggle with. And then just trusting your gut is like, I think, I, I don't think we were trusting our gut very much those first couple of legs. Uh, so these questions we got, was it weird to watch now uh, <clears throat> nobody in masks? And I have to say it is weird now with the lens of COVID to see like you leaned in for a kiss for the queen. I'm using air quotes. Yeah, I kissed, I kissed a stranger. Yeah, I kissed a stranger. And so to see that, I'm like, oh my God, like we would never do that right now. And so through the lens of COVID, it looks so strange, but also like, I'm like, okay, guys, we're going to get back there. Like, we're going to do it. Were you limited on, on how many people you could talk to? I don't know if this was a talk to. and You can ask anybody you want for directions. You just have to stop and get it cleared. So that's why we were trying to minimize it. But no, we couldn't talk to our family. Somebody asked, how did seeing your ADHD featured so prominently make you feel? Um, 
good. I, the good and the bad. You've got to show both. Okay. So I'm glad, I'm glad they showed uh, how it really helped me in the puzzle, but you've also got to show like it, it is a struggle, right? Like we, I talk about how ADHD is a superpower and it can really help you focus on tasks, but it's also a weight that, that you carry with you that causes you to fixate on some of the wrong things sometimes. And that happened to me as well. Millions of us have it. Um, and I, I am, man, I'm so glad that they are willing to show the positive side of it. So that was nice. I also, um, at some point want them to change the name. Yeah. I hate the name ADHD. Sorry, go ahead. So, um, what did you do after you finished the first leg? We went to a hotel room for a few hours and slept very little and I freaked out. Will you talk about the fixing your hair thing? I see oh, this is great. This so, is a great little So I was, note. I was in the, there's a clip of me in, in the first leg and I'm uh-huh. like fixing, I'm pulling my hair back. And I'm like, give me a kiss. And it was like, like, and I'm fixing my hair. And there was some like, why would you stop and fix your hair and ask for a kiss? And then because it, we had just left that first detour and I knew we were either like Penn was saying we were worst okay. case fifth. Yeah. Best case first, but oh, fifth. And, uh, we had just run like many miles and we were figuring out, we were still figuring out where we were going. So taking 20 seconds to do that, we felt okay. About but it. I, but I love that. Uh, I love that note. Cause it's something you said last night when we were watching, you can kind of, it's a fun little game. You can kind of tell if we're doing all right, or if there's no one anywhere near us, we look like this probably. Mm-hmm. And if we don't know where we're going to finish and we're not in first place and like we don't know where anybody else is. That's the hair. We're going to look like this. So here's some tweets. Um, somebody said, I don't know how old Kim and Penn are, but it's not like they're old man, Jerry and Scout Cloud Lee out there. Yes. Thank you. And then I think that was says, after Phil called us, basically yeah, called us old. Said no one tell Kim and Penn they didn't actually meet the queen. There are people who think that we thought that was the real queen. You guys. Um, somebody said, I'm enjoying the friendship between Kara and Ray and Kim and Penn. So am I. I love those guys. Uh, Ray, Ray is just a ray of sunshine and he's just handsome as crap. Um, so that's all I got. So from, yeah. uh, somebody was like, dripping cakes don't count. And then, so, so people were texting about or tweeting about like the, the drippage. The drippage. So some people got passed with drippage. It's fine. Whatever. Um, Penn won me over on this race comment. So there was a play on the Amazing Race Twitter feed where Penn says, he's like, you know how it's a clue? Because it's a clue. And somebody said, I mean, he did say he has severe ADHD. So that explains the overthinking. The good and the bad. The good and the bad. That's like, honestly, let's just, let's have an honest conversation about it. So our next leg, um, they didn't, I... I think everybody knows where we went, but we're not going to say it because we don't want to get sued by CBS, but they did preview. It is a self-drive. They also previewed that it's when the world stops. So I am really curious to see how they decide to tell this story. The amazing race is famous for having an aura of majesty and, and, uh, and, and idyllic kind of adventure. And they don't, break the fourth wall down very much. Uh, And that's understandable. Most shows do not break that fourth wall down because you want to have this feeling that this is the production is not really happening, that the photographers aren't there. They're floating magically behind you. And um, they do a great job with it for the most part. But I think they've got to find some way to break down that fourth wall next week. Right. Because it's it's never happened before. I um am. Uh, we have talked to Bertram and Elise, the producers, about like, let us, I'm fascinated by the production and part of it. So one of the reasons I wanted to go on the race, I just wanted, as a production nerd, I wanted to see how it was produced. And I was like, let us produce your YouTube series on the, <laughs> on just the planning that goes into it and just yeah. how you design the course it's, and, and how you produce it and how they practice it. And I'm, I'm endlessly fascinated. I think it's more amazing than the race itself. I know, how just they to put see all the, and it's yeah. fascinating to, to have a glimpse of it. Um, if this YouTube thing doesn't work out for us, I think I'd apply for a job there because it's fascinating and to me. And you'd stay in great shape if you were a photographer. Uh, oh, I could never be a photographer <laughs> or sound person. Um, I would also say that I, I would try to watch this these first two episodes as a fan, which was really hard. So were the tasks, you know, hard enough? Physic- I mean, obviously we struggled with them, so the answer is yes. Um, but I'm interested, it, it was tough for me to look at this because I can be like, oh, okay, that leg design was fine. Those tasks were okay. Like as a fan, I'll, I'll get in their critique. It was hard for me to sit, watch myself and then critique that. So I'm interested in people's feedback. Um, but the next leg is a self-drive. And I will say it's a stick shift. 
in a country where you're driving on the opposite side of the road. So opposite side of the road and stick shift. Um, and yes, yeah. I think that episode could, this third leg could be two hours. They could have made that one two hours. Do you feel like they could have made last night shorter and yeah. then next week longer? Cause yes. I mean, just from what you remember, right. And, and this was just us, right. We had a crazy day on the one you're going to see next week. And then you hear from some of the other people about the day that they had. I, mean, I don't know how they're going to fit this into 40 minutes. Yeah. So it's the, going to be bonkers. The crew we were talking to at the end, they're like, this could be two hours. This could, I mean, this could be a two hour episode. Maybe they'll it's do not, that. No, it's not going to be. Okay. Um, but thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you are listening to us where you normally listen to your podcast, thank you so much. Um, and throughout the season, we are going to have, other contestants you'll get to meet them we're gonna you know interview them as well right now cbs does not want us to do that until i after, understand i after understand the pandemic you're gonna figure out why let's put it that way uh, um, but, but i do get it but thank you for watching and listening and if you have any questions hit us up yeah um if you watch D this whole thing on youtube i mean that's a long bravo time. yeah and, and, and we're getting we're, these are from Ikea. I was going to bring we're that gonna, up. We're going to get pictures. Do you for like our new podcast set? It's clearly new. <laughs> because they're still like the, the Ikea stickers. What is it called? What's the, is it's it like, like a, a fluble dinger? It's the ribba. Hang on. Let me look at this up. Ribba? It's a, ribba? Oh, that's disappointing. Usually it has more consonants. Usually yeah. it's like a florgal fling. Okay, guys. Uh, thanks for watching and listening and being here and supporting I us. I really hope this recorded. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Just the video. The, the audio recorded for sure. But Would like, it be we, funny? Hang on.